How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I have been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close colleagues say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool. I have now written 134 articles and recorded 30 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently made a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And I'm going to try and keep this short. Uh, I'm going to try and keep a try this, try to do this as a shorty uh, for five or ten minutes, but it might take me a little while to get over some of the information in this video today. Um, and this is really a prerequisite to uh, creating our first Windows virtual machine on VMware vSphere Hypervisor 8. Um, and I previously created an article and videos on how to create your first virtual Windows virtual machine on vSphere Hypervisor 7. Also followed up with an article as well. But this is actually a prerequisite because the virtual machine that we're going to deploy first in this particular lab is going to be Windows 11. And Windows 11 has a new requirement uh, by Microsoft. And I'm sure you've probably heard that Windows 11 now needs to have a TPM device, a trusted platform module. Um, and now we can create a VTPM in as a device, as a virtual device for our virtual machine to support Windows 11. But I just wanted to show you what happens if you create a Windows 11 VM on a host without a virtual TPM present and the error message that you will see. So I've quickly deployed a Windows 11 virtual machine uh, or I've started to deploy a Windows 11 virtual machine on an ESXi 8 host. Uh, and this would actually also apply to Windows, uh, not Windows, ESXi 7 as well. Um, and if you actually try to run Windows 11 um, on ESXi without a trusted platform module, you will actually basically see this similar error message that says this PC can run Windows 11. Um, it doesn't meet the system requirements. And some of the system requirements are not only the processor, um, but also um, the, the virtual TPM version as well. Now, if I just quickly go through and say this is a prerequisite, because what I am going to show you as to how you actually add a native key provider in vSphere to support a virtual trusted platform module. But I just wanted to quickly show you that if we do uh, try to create again a virtual machine, so I'm sure we're all familiar with this, and I'm just going to basically put in Windows 11 test, and we select Windows as the guest OS. Uh, notice that there's a Microsoft Windows 12 that's appeared in there, but if I select Microsoft Windows 11, followed by, and even if I click enable Windows based security and I click next. I choose the storage location followed by next. And if I add other device, you will notice that there is no TPM device for me to add. So I know that there is a workaround and possibly a published Microsoft workaround hack. I'd have to research that, but I know that there is a mechanism whereby you can alter the registry after you have booted Windows 11 and you can turn off the check so you can force Windows 11 to install on ESXi or any other platform on a physical platform 
uh, without it actually checking to see that there is a TPM module. So I'm just going to big X out of that. Uh, I just wanted to show you what happens if you try to install uh, Windows 11 on ESXi uh, without a TPM directly on a host. So I'm also going to I'm going to quickly. I'm going to go back to our vCenter server connection and you can see that there's our Windows 11 no TPM device there. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to create a virtual machine. Um, so I'm going to call it Windows 11 uh, test and I'm going to call it no key provider because a key provider is what we actually need to support uh, the TPM functionality. But for shits and giggles, I'm just going to go forward and say Windows 11 test, no key provider, because I've not set the no key provider up yet. And this is the purpose of this video that I wanted to show you how we actually set up the key provider and talk about what the key provider is and whether or not that we should use the native key provider in VC or whether or not that we should use an external one, because it's a question that comes up at Experts Exchange. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to choose the SXI002. 01 doesn't have a lot of memory to play with, so I'm going to click next. I'm going to select the data store. I'm going to follow by next. ESXi 8 or later, followed by next. I'm going to turn on enable Windows Virtual Base Security, followed by next. And interestingly, I was expecting that. So you will now also notice that. There is no TPM option here. So if I go forward and do exactly the same thing, then we're going to get the same failure again. Um, without a TPM device, uh, we cannot meet the requirements of Windows 11. So let me just cancel out of that and show you how we actually add a key provider to support virtual TPM. So quite simply, we select v, you select your vCenter server at the top, at the root of the hierarchy in your inventory. And we select configure and we select key providers and we click add. Now there's two options there that say add native key provider. Now a native key provider is specifically internal to VMware vSphere. So if you need to use a key provider to manage your keys, um, there's not really any reason why uh, you shouldn't use the vSphere native key provider. So if you need to manage keys internally in a vSphere environment, then the native key provider will provide that functionality for you. If, however, that you need to use a key provider which sits outside of your organization, outside of your vSphere organization or internally for your VMs, then you would actually need to add a standard key provider. But using a standard key provider could give you more flexibility, certainly supports external devices outside of your Visa environment. But like any additional third party standard key providers, there will be a cost associated with that. And key providers, appliances and software is available in the HCM. Uh, so it's a question that comes up a few times. Should I use the standard key provider or should I use the native key provider? And if you just need that functionality inside your Visa infrastructure, then there's no reason why your native key provider shouldn't be used. However, do bear in mind if vCenter server is unavailable, you will not be able to start your virtual machines. If vCenter server becomes corrupted, and you cannot recover the keys, i.e. you don't back up your vCenter server using the VAMI um, and you lose the keys, you will not be able to start your vCenter server, which is why it's important if you have TPM devices in your server. And I highly recommend that you splash out the extra cash for a couple of dollars more couple of pounds more to include TPM devices in your server. If your host server, your host ESXi server has a TPM device, the keys will be cached 
in your TPM device on the host server. So in the event that vCenter server is not available, you will be able to power up those virtual machines. So it actually basically says here, use key provider only with TPM protected DSXR hosts. Well, I don't have TPMs in these hosts in this lab, so I'm not going to tick that. So I'm just basically going to give it a name. Uh, so I'm just going to call it EE Lab uh, KVM uh, or Key. And I'm going to click Add. And you will notice straight away uh, that it's added, it's native. It says the status is not backed up. So again, um, it's worth just backing it up so that you have got a copy of the keys um so it's auto filling a password for me there and i'm going to say back up the key provider and i'm going to save those there i'm going to get rid of that and now i've actually backed up so if you even if you have got tpm devices in your esxi hosts back up the native key provider, store that file safe so that you can restore it, and also make sure that you back up your vCenter server regularly through the VAMI interface. And you should be doing that anyway. And if, um, maybe, or maybe I'll, I'll do a video on that later to show you how you can regularly uh, set the schedule up to automatically back up your uh, vCenter server. So in the event that vCenter server gets corrupted, uh, you can just download the latest. Um, or download the same version that you installed, redeploy, restore, and you're back to where you were. Okay, so that's all I've got to show you in this particular video as to how we add a native key provider. Uh, come back soon uh, because we're going to install our first virtual machine, which is going to be Windows 11. And if you've watched the previous video or this video, you will see how you can actually basically create that key provider uh, that supports a virtual TPM device uh, for Windows 11. So again, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully a short one, uh, a shorty this time. Uh, so come back soon uh, to see a Windows 11 installation on ESXi 8. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.